Hello and thanks for watching this short video focusing on the new QuickBooks Online and some of the less used sales transactions. We're going to look at delayed charges, um, refund receipt, things like that. Off the beaten path, but still they'll come into play uh, many times. So again, I can do it from the transactions sales window where I can go to create new. Right? And I could do a delayed charge from here. Or under the quick create icon, list of all of them, right? Delayed charge, delayed credit, refund receipt. So let's do like the sales receipt, refund re receipt. But let's start with a delayed charge. I'm going to click on that. It opens up the form. It looks like it's every other form. Very consistent. And for Duke's basketball camp, we're just going to, we have done some uh, you know, installation. And for 50 bucks, it's a charge. Now this is non-posting. But I can keep it for later. And again, I can attach a document to it if I want to. So I'll click Save and Close. You can even make this delayed charge recurring. And now that I have the actual delayed charge, I can go ahead and create an invoice. Now I can do it from here. Uh, see Duke's Basketball Camp. And I go ahead and start the invoice. So let's stay with that workflow. But before, just to show you, in case someone forgets and just is used to going to Quick Create Invoice and they choose Duke's, just watch the drawer on the right. It's going to kick out and I can add the charge there. So it, it, QuickBooks Online, the new QuickBooks Online is going to try to pre prevent you from making a, a mistake or just reminding you, if you will. But let's stay with the workflow. The next logical action, start the invoice. It's going to go ahead and create the invoice with that delayed charge. And now when I click on the actual save and close, this will book and, and appropriately hit my reports. And it's a posting transaction. And then, you know, the link transaction is the charge. Right. Which you can remove if you want, create a new invoice, but I'm going to leave it there. And I love the little blue links. Remember, those will bring you to the transaction. So it's like a zoom, if you will, or drilling in. So I'm going to click save and close, and that's that's resolved. Okay. So let's look at a few other customer transactions. I have a sales receipt. Now, this one's probably used a lot. I, I shouldn't say it's never hardly used, but I'm sure it's used quite a bit. And this time, we're going to do the Ocean View Boulevard of Freeman Sporting Goods. Obviously, this is, you know, they're going to give me the cash right here. Uh, it's not an invoice situation. There's no accounts receivable involved. And they're, they used a check. And I can even put in a, a reference number and choose where I want to deposit it. And typically, you're going to put it on undeposited funds. But in the sales sheet, I might just put it right into checking, right? And that'll go ahead and debit checking and credit my revenue, basically, is what's going to happen. And this was for some concrete. And we did about $350 worth of work. Again, you can attach documents to the sales receipt. I can choose the particular uh, sales tax rate, a discount percentage if I want to do that. And then I have the total there, including the sales tax and minus the, the discount. Let me put one in. If you're not seeing discount in yours, it's actually a preference. So you can go to the gear icon. Well, let me click yes to save the changes. You saw the sales receipt, but the gear icon here and I can choose company settings. And when you're brought into the preferences, and this view is going to change a little, it'll be new, but they'll still be in there. But I can go to both deposits and discounts and add that as a field on, on transactions. Okay, so important to know. Okay, so that was, we've done the delayed charge, brought it to an invoice. Uh, we've done the, the sales receipt. So let's continue on looking at some of the other customer transaction types, one I have not tried yet. So I'm going to click the quick create. And I'm going to choose refund receipt. So I'm actually, we've just done a sales receipt. So I'm going to give a refund to somebody. And you just choose the customer. Bills win, serve, shop. And then you have to choose the payment method. And, and then I'm going to refund from checking. Because that's where I deposit it. And I can put in the you know, check number, print it later if I want. And I can choose uh, what I'm actually refunding. We'll say it was just some hours and general stuff. Overcharged on labor. And then I'll just put in, you know, the amount and go ahead and click save and close. And that's a refund receipt that I can then print out uh, and print the actual checkout and give to uh, Bill's Windsurf shop. Save and close is what I'm going to choose there. Refund receipt is saved. There you see I have a couple for Bill. Even if I look in on the customer uh, trans uh, list here, and I can go ahead and drill into Bill's Windsurf shop and there's the refund. The refund's right there. I can go ahead and print them out and take care of that for bill for the overcharging. Another customer transaction you might not use a lot would be delayed credit. Click on that. Again, 
going to choose a customer. So instead of a charge that I'm passing through, uh, or they're going to pick up on an invoice for a customer, this would be a credit that's also non-posting that I might want to, you know, give to a particular customer. So cool cars, and they're going to get a credit. It's not posting yet. Here's the gardening, and this is just like, you know, first two hours of work are free. And this will be, you know, 50 bucks as a delayed credit. Click save and close. So if we go back to the customer list, again, cool cars, I can drill in and see that that uh, credit is there. I can actually, it's delayed. I have not yet brought it to an invoice, so I can apply it to an invoice or start the invoice and add other things as well. Another way to see it is if I go to the quick create icon and click on invoice and choose cool cars, you'll see that the credit is there ready to be applied you know, along when I'm selling other things to them and services, this would take $50 uh, off of it from there. So that's kind of uh, just an overview of some of the lesser known transaction types that you can do within the new QuickBooks Online uh, that are there in case you need them. Again, sales receipt, I would say these five you're going to be using often. Uh, maybe not credit memo all the time, but definitely invoice, receive payment estimate, or sales receipt. But then if you need to do a delayed charge, to pass through an invoice for later, or pick up on a customer invoice later, or a delayed credit, right, to take off of an invoice, or you want to apply it to an invoice later, you can, and then a refund receipt as well when you're giving money back to your customer. Hope this has been helpful. Have a great day.